the five holiday hosting tips to remember when you're feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> Everyone gets overwhelmed. And I made you a list of five things that you can remember when hosting, not only for the holidays, but hosting in general, to help make your guests feel at home. I promise you won't forget these because they're linked to the five senses. Sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. There's gonna be at least one thing you haven't thought about and it will help you be a better host. My best, I don't know who's coming to the party or what they're gonna eat when they get here, but we're having since number one is sight and it's not just about hiding your clutter we've all been personally victimized by bad lighting if you ever stayed past last call at the bar and they turn the lights on and there's a reason why lighting in hospitals and doctor's offices and dental offices feel so bright and it's because they need to be they need to be clean spaces where you can see stuff but this is not the type of lighting that you want to have at home So I'm here to tell you the exact formula from a scientific perspective of the type of lighting that you need to get. You wanna look for lighting in the 2700 to 3000 Kelvin light temperature range. And this is a warm to neutral white lighting. Here's a handy chart that will help illustrate lighting temperature. And you'll see these warm, neutral, cool, and cold words used on packaging. I don't like that. I think you can opt for a mathematical foolproof formula. At home, opting in the 2000 to 3000 Kelvin range for hosting, but for staging, 2700 Kelvin, preferably 3000 Kelvin is the sweet spot. Now that I've gotten that off my chest, we gotta get on the same page about lighting types now. If you're on TikTok, you've seen people call this the big light. Here's why the big light should be banned. <sighs> Much better. I don't have many rules for my house, but I do have one. And that is that we never use the big light. Basically, if you have any light attached to the ceiling, don't do it for hosting. It's too harsh and casts too many harsh shadows. So what you're gonna wanna do when hosting is opt for lamp lighting. No more overhead light. We're just doing lamp lighting. If you're wondering how many lamps is too many, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. If you're wondering why you can't put a lamp on that table because there's no outlet nearby, opt for battery powered. Battery powered, rechargeable, perfect little lamps. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at local businesses who sell really cute designer lamps. You can buy a thrifted lamp. You can borrow a lamp from your mom. And for some reason, if lamps don't work for you, you can do candlelight or retro string lights. There's a company called True Tone and they have actual vintage inspired retro string lights. This holiday season, decorate your home with the new True Tone LED Christmas bulbs that look just like vintage incandescent. Christmas lights you buy at the store nowadays, they're, they're not like they used to be. They didn't smash anytime you tried to install them. Come on, unravel these. You have to check every bulb. Oops, got a little knot here. Anyway, so I found this company that produces modern but retro string lights, and they are made of glass, so they will smash still. You gotta set the mood. Duh, your sounds should set the mood for the context of your gathering. So find a playlist or two in advance and skip being the DJ for the night and just focus on the good company of your guests. I love a coffee house jazz playlist or finding something on YouTube that has images you can put on in the background. That's kind of nice. I'm not like a vinyl snob or anything, but I do think vinyl is a vibe. It's kind of a fun adventure to go pick out something for your event. That could be like the record that you got for when you had so-and-so over for dinner. It's a really fun way to kind of explore music and just find things that you wouldn't normally be drawn to. Anyone who's in Toronto, I found a cute new record shop called Elsie's. You really wouldn't know that it's a record shop from the street, but they have great coffee and great grilled cheese. So I would definitely check out a place like that. So wherever you are, find somewhere like that in your neighborhood and you won't be disappointed. You stink. If you use these, they are offensive, chemical, harsh. It just feels like you're covering something up but I'm not here to be negative. I'm here to give you solutions to problems. So here's what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna bake cookies. You're gonna get naturally scented soy or beeswax candles, or you're gonna make a good potpourri. Google that. There's so many good recipes and that's it. For holiday hosting, you really can't screw this up unless you're using super artificial scents. When in doubt, keep it simple, do what the Victorian people would have done. Again, if you're from Toronto, there's a really fun, cute shop called This Candle Is Lit, and they sell some Toronto-made candles, so check it out. Can I get you a drink? Wow, 
I've never heard that one before. If you want your guests to feel at home, give them something to nibble on and give them a welcome drink. Think about how hospitality works in a restaurant or a five-star hotel. The first thing that you're trained to do is get your guest a glass of water. And then oftentimes they're also gonna bring you a bowl of chips or olives or peanuts or things to snack on. There's a reason they give people this at bars. They want you to feel comfortable. It's like the first rule of hosting. Also regarding taste, I like to source recipes from vintage magazines. There's something about an old school recipe that is comforting, nostalgic, and just takes you back in time. It's a great conversation starter. I'm so excited to have you all here to play this game together. The last of the five senses is touch. And this is a good last sense to remember because it's like touch and feel, things you can feel and are tangible, but also like that heartwarming, how people feel. Sometimes there's people who are tired, they might not wanna talk or maybe just not wanna talk about what you're talking about. So having cards, board games and magazines available on the side for someone to grab when the conversation gets dull is so comforting. One of our family favorites is Quirkle. And board games just elevate the mood. They get people engaged, they get people talking and conversing in such like a organic way, it's pretty awesome. Keep people off their phones, at least. The next two are pet peeves of mine, forgetting to clean doorknobs and light switches. These are such high touch items that they need to be cleaned very frequently, but it's especially important to clean them when someone is coming into your home and you want them to feel comfortable. And then there's also bathroom hand towels. A communal hand towel is... <laughs> Even worse is like a shower towel that guests have to use if they're visiting. That's just like straight to jail. You could opt for bathroom washcloth towels, which are like the tiny square towels, single use, and then just give someone a basket to toss it into when they're finished. So every guest gets an individual hand towel and then just wash them in bulk at the end of the night. So your guest is gonna know they wash their hands all clean. Not only are their hands clean, but they get to use a brand new clean towel. And when they're turning the light off in the bathroom, it's clean and fresh. You really can't go wrong doing that. When in doubt, do some research or just do some thinking about what a five-star hotel would do. And they would never give you a communal hand towel. Just saying. So those are the five handy hosting tips that I hope you will never forget because if you can remember the five senses, you will remember these tips. Zit, don't get scared now. Are y'all throwing a party?